Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reef. On today's episode, I'm gonna add the fourth and final MP60 to my tank. I'm gonna show you what you get in the box, how to set it up, and how to work with the Mobius platform. All right, thanks for joining me on another episode of Parker's Reef. And today we're working on my dream reef tank. And in fact, we're adding what is hopefully the last bit of flow I'm gonna to need to add to this tank for quite some time. Currently, I have the return pump coming from an Abyss A200, set at about five to 6,000 liters per hour. I have two Tunzi Stream 3s up in each corner of the tank in an anti-sink mode, pushing water back and forth to create a gentle wave type motion. And now currently I have three MP60s on my back wall, set to some to sink and some to anti-sink to push water front to back and back to front of the tank. So I've got wave motions and uh, all sorts of chaotic flow coming in all different directions. Now, the plan always was to add four. Initially, I could only afford two MP60s. Now I've got my second two. I went and put the first of the second two on and then realized that I haven't actually done a video of it at all. So before uh, ripping the fourth and final one out of the box, I grabbed the camera out and I thought I'd take you guys through it. We'll open it up. I'll show you what you get in there. I'll show you how you go about setting it up on your tank. And then last but not least, I'll show you how you navigate your way through the new Mobius platform so that you can get the most out of your pump. So uh, let's get this box open and uh, get playing with my new toys. All right, here we have it, the uh, Vortec MP60 QD, which stands for Quiet Drive. It's got all sorts of uh, information, specifications, dimensions and whatnot on the box, but um, I think if you've uh, purchased a uh, Vortec MP60, you've probably got a rough idea of what these pumps do. They've obviously got the uh, dry side on the outside of the tank, which allows the cables to stay out of the tank, keeps all the heat and all the noise and everything out of the water. Now, obviously you have a wet side and these magnetically couple together through the glass. Now, that's probably the only restriction with the MP60 is that you need to be able to access both sides of the glass. It's got to be a nice clear pane of glass. It doesn't have to be visibly clear, but it's got to be obstruction free. It's got to be smooth. It's got to be level. If you've got like a, uh, a, an acrylic back wall stuck on your tank, you've got to be a little bit careful if it's a bit wavy or anything like that. But um, realistically, these guys are pretty easy to mount and I'm going to be putting them on my back wall where the dry sides are nice and hidden. But uh, let's get it open and have a look. All right, now, <laughs> a couple of little points of interest here. It does say caution, strong magnets. You do have to be careful with it, mainly with magnet cleaners, but these pumps are quite strong in their magnets as well. You don't want to get your fingers caught between them. And uh, secondly, the power cables are stored underneath this packaging insert. I'm assuming Ecotech have um, had a lot of calls or emails by people saying that the, uh, the cable that goes to the power supply is missing. It's not actually the case. You do have a, a little setup guide book in here. If I can get it out. Get a little instruction on Mobius. You won't need that instruction because I'm gonna take you through it and a quick setup guide. Again, I'll take you through it. Let's pull the uh, wet side out. It does come, unfortunately a bit squashed up, but it doesn't matter. The uh, little foam guards, I tend not to run these things. I find they just get clogged up with detritus real quick. But uh, if you're putting something delicate in the tank, um, or you're just wanting to get it acclimated to the uh, MP60s, they can be handy. Got the uh, wet side itself. All right, there's our dry, uh, that's our wet side. Here's our dry side with a decent length of cable. We'll keep that well away from the wet side for the time being. There's our uh, quiet drive controller. Here's some very important parts. These are some uh, little sticky tabs and also uh, wet, uh, sorry, dry side brackets, which just help hold this dry side in place. One thing you need to be very careful of with the MP60 or any of the Vortec pumps is that if someone is to bump the dry side or even if something quite strong obstructs the wet side, you can actually dislodge the magnetic coupling. And uh, these things aren't exactly cheap. You don't want this falling to the floor, say six feet crashing on a hard tiled floor or something like that. It's gonna do damage to the pump, it's gonna do damage to your floor or it's gonna do damage to your foot. You don't want any of those things. So I highly recommend following the instructions here to make sure that you secure the pump with one of these uh, zip ties and brackets there to make sure that the uh, cable holds the pump up. But also they now include, um, well, I say now include, I've only ever had them on MP60s before. Um, uh, when I've had MP10s and MP40s, they didn't have them. I don't know whether they normally do or not, but you get these little uh, dry side supports, which 
just sort of sit up underneath the pump so you can find it where you had it located before nice and easily. So I recommend using both of those. We have uh, the power supply itself, which on the MP60 is a 32 volt, 3.12 amp series power supply. We have various spaces. Get them all out. So we've got one which uh, allows you to mount the pump onto one inch thick or 26 mil glass. We then come into the uh, 16 to 19 mil glass thickness. Then we come to the uh, nine and a half to 13 mil. Wow, if you were fitting one, an MP60 on a tank that only had nine and a half mil glass or three eight glass. Whew, no wonder you need a big rubber spacer for that, but uh, we'll be using the uh, 16 to 19 mil um, as my tank is 19 mil. So we'll just keep those aside. And then as the instructions tell us, the uh, power cable is underneath the insert. All right, let's get all of the stuff we don't need away. All right, probably one of the only other things we really need to do to prepare this before we go uh, getting brackets out and um, climbing up over the tank to put this where I want it, is uh, we need to remove this sticker here. As it says, remove this sticker before applying. And then uh, you make sure you apply the uh, spacer that you want. So I'm gonna remove sticker as requested. There's a sticker and there's also, that's better. So now we get this nice sticky surface there. I'm gonna remove this sticker as well. Again, this is the medium thickness because I am using a 19 mil glass or three quarter thick. And what I like to do is I like to get this little uh, tab here. I like to align that with the top of the pump. Let's make sure there's nothing else on there because it's sticky and it will be quite difficult to remove. All right, there we go. All right, now it's got my appropriately sized spacer on the uh, dry side, so that's good to go. The wet side itself is good to go. The electrical side of stuff, we'll worry about that a little bit later. I think the first thing we should do is get up uh, into position, get this pump on there, and then we'll worry about running the electrical side of things. Then I'll run you through how I personally go about making sure the pump is aligned. Then we'll jump onto Mobius and uh, connect it up with the rest of my pumps. Happy days. Okay, now that I've got the wet side and the dry side in position, before I plug in the power and just uh, see whether it works, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna get up back on my uh, platform here. I'm gonna secure the uh, dry side by holding onto the cable with my hand. And with my other hand, I'm gonna be holding or at least supporting the wet side. I'll get someone to turn the power on for me. If you don't have someone handy to do that, you probably could plug it in. It takes a second for the pump to boot up anyway, and then get your hand down around the wet side. The reason why you want your hand around the wet side is that you wanna be able to gently move the wet side around until it, you find that nice quiet center of the uh, magnetic coupling. To do that, I like to turn it to green mode, which is where a default starts up by. And then once I think I've got it pretty close, I turn the flow up to maximum. That puts the pump at its absolute limit. And what that will do is it will very audibly let you know whether you've got that uh, dry side and wet side aligned perfectly or not. As soon as you've got it nice and quiet and uh, it's not blowing you out of the tank, you can turn that flow back down, right down to the minimum. Don't worry about changing the modes yet. We'll do that in a minute. I'm gonna jump up and do that now. Um, I'll get this pump flowing, I'll get it aligned up and um, then we can jump into Mobius and get the uh, finer details of programming this pump done. All right, one step that I nearly forgot, now that I've got my dry side and wet side all aligned, the pump's running nice and quietly, I'm gonna grab my uh, little securing uh, sticky pads and zip ties. I'll put a little um, one of these little supports. You get two. I'm gonna put one just underneath the uh, dry side so that I can easily find where the dry side sits next time. Keep the other one as a spare and I'll use just one of the uh, four included uh, zip tie cable holders to hold the cable up. So I won't put much tension on the cable there but I'll basically just mount this above the pump then I'll get one of the zip ties, I'll put it through the little included uh, holes there, and then I'll zip tie the cable to that, just so that if something does go wrong and the uh, wet side falls off the dry side, the magnetic comes decoupled. My uh, MP60, <laughs> which I uh, saved and saved my pennies for, is not gonna go crashing behind the tank and uh, 
drop down somewhere where I can never find it again. So I'm just gonna jump up on the tank and do that now. Bear with me one second. All right, so now I'm gonna set up the uh, fourth and final pump in my Mobius app, which I'll do on my phone, but I should actually also point out that you can download that app also uh, for a tablet. I will be in the future mounting this old spare iPad somewhere in my cabinet, which will give me really nice access to all of the web enabled devices. So I'll be able to have the uh, Teco chiller showing me the temperature on there. I'll be able to have easy access to all of my Mobius controlled devices. So just a nice little cheap and easy Almost wireless, I mean, you're probably gonna to need to plug it in for power, but um, super easy way to have a display um, and make your cabinet look really neat. But enough of that, let's jump in onto my phone and uh, I'll get a screen recording going so you guys can see what's happening. All right, now we can jump into my aquarium section and go to Mobius itself. Go back home, okay, so I've already set up a tank that I've called my main display. Now, uh, if I go into the flow of that, you can see that I've got three pumps here already in existence. I've got the uh, far right pump, which is the one that I set everything to. It's the parent in this situation. Then I've got middle right, then I've got far left. The new one we've just added is in the middle on the left. So it'll be middle left. <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna do now is hit the plus on this screen and instantly it finds the pump. You don't have to do anything weird like that. It just, it knows it's there. Click on that and go next. It'll do a firmware check because uh, who knows how long this has been sitting on the uh, shelf for and in that time uh, before updating is, yep, won't unplug, that's fine. Who knows how long the device has been sitting on the shelf for and since then the Ecotech team have continually released new firmware and updates making these pumps even better as the days go by. So this will download the absolute latest software for it and make sure that it's operating at its peak. All right, update is complete. Your devices are going to finish the app installation. Feel free to leave the app while this occurs. That's eh, okay, I'll stay in the app. All right, update complete, happy days. It's now adding this MP60 to the setup, which is always good. I'm not sure how long this part will take. I don't think it'll take very long. What I wanna do is name this device while I've got it there, remembering this is middle left. I want to set it to be a, uh, a child of one of the other pumps. Okay, set up complete. Now, you've got a few options here. You can go for a default, low, medium, high. I'm going to set it to low just for now. Um, we're going to change this anyway, but just so it doesn't uh, start blasting the sand like it already is. Ah. Okay, <laughs> now you can pick a template. Again, with the pumps, it doesn't matter so much. I'm going to change these settings anyway, but I'm going to go for Coral Lab AB Plus anyway. Wow, my internet is slow. Okay. Let's pick that up, it tells you what it's about. Uh, in this, I'm gonna say activate, that's fine. All right, takes me back to my main display page. Now down the, model, down the bottom in the middle here is the flow, I'm gonna click on that. It's gonna show me all of my pumps. You can see the one there, it's at the 50% is the new one. I don't want 50%, I'm gonna quickly turn that down before it blows all my sand out of the way and bring that back to 30%. You can see you can do it individual steps, um, which is pretty cool. All right, that's got it back down to 30%, like the rest of my pumps, as you can see on the screen there. But what I wanna do is link it so that um, it's also one of the uh, children of the far right. Now, the reason why I have them all linked to the far right, and I'll show you why. If we come in here, you can see we've just got this standard that gives you a, a sort of around the clock view of what your schedule is. Doesn't look all that interesting when you've just got one mode in there, that's fine. I'm gonna go into edit. And what I'm gonna do is you've got all these different modes here. You can go from the same way you can control it through the actual handheld controller itself. You've got constant speed, reef crest, which is what it is on now. Lagoon, short pulse, feed, tidal swell, nutrient transport, child's the one I'll be going to. Expanding pulse, gyre, and transition, where you transition from one speed to another. That's interesting. I'm gonna to go to child, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag that just anywhere onto there. And I'm gonna make it a child of the far right. That's the one that's my parent for all of them. And it's gonna drop this max speed back to 30%. And don't worry about the time so much for now. I'm gonna click on the old one, the, the uh, reef crest, and I'm gonna click on the trash down the bottom just to get rid of that. That's gonna make the child setting take up the entire day. Of course, I can add other modes to it if I want to, that's fine. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this pump, I'm gonna actually make it match the far right, because that way I'll have 
the far right and the middle left doing the same and the uh, middle right and the far left doing the same, but the middle left and, sorry, <laughs> two will be matched, two will be anti-synced and they're sort of staggered. So I get this mixing of pulsing if you like my dancing there. So I'm gonna make this one, this one's going to match. So it's gonna be sync, but if I wanted to, I can pick anti-sync. There's also eco smart back, which I must admit, I don't really know what that is. I know sync and anti-sync. I'm gonna go sync and then I'm gonna go done. Simple as that, hit save and uh, my pump is now set up. All right, so if I go on the flow button there, you can see that I've got all four of my pumps on screen now. And you can see that the one in yellow there is the, it's set to reef crest, that's the parent on the far right. The other three are all set to children of the far right, whether they be synced or anti-synced. Now you can also go back to uh, that home screen there and you can do feed mode, which when I press that, it slows all four of the pumps down to a bare minimum. I really like the way it does that. It doesn't just stop them. It just has them on this really slow mode. So you don't get some of those cheeky fish like your blennies or uh, gobies or whatnot swimming up in there. And then when you forget about them or the timer runs out on your feed mode and they come back on, you end up with a second round of feeding with a little bit of sashimi in your tank, which is not what I want at all. So I really love this feed mode that just slows it down basically makes the pumps almost ineffective where they just turn slow enough, not really to move any water, but stop fish getting in them. I love the way that it automatically does that with all. And I love the way that I can also interrupt that. I can turn the feed mode off and they're back up and running as they should, which is really cool. You've also got these uh, feed, are uh, these not feed modes, these live demo modes where you can jump in and change something. So if I wanted to put these all at say uh, 50%, that puts all the pumps instantly 50% and you can see the live demo will run for two minutes. I can stop the live demo and it returns back to my scheduled programming. Likewise, if I wanted to try a different mode, I might wanna try short pulse, 75%, sure, let's do that. It's a really quick way of being able to try different modes before you go building a schedule. And uh, okay, wow, well, that's a lot of flow. Four MP60s uh, set to the live demo is uh, terrifying my clown. So I'm just gonna stop that live demo and return to my uh, standard scheduling. And um, it's really about as simple as that. Like I said, you can jump in and you can change each one of the pumps individually or, uh, oh, one thing we do need to do is change the name of this one. Let's go into this one, go in here, go to devices. There'll be one here, which as you can see, does not have a name. We've got far right, far left, middle right, and then this uh, new one. I'm gonna change the name of this one to be uh, middle left. You've also got this identify button up here, which will uh, flash on the controller to show you which one it is. I don't need to worry about that because I literally just added it, but now I've got my far right, far left, middle right, middle left. Pumps are all set up, they're synced, happy days. All right, guys, there you have it. That's the uh, fourth and final MP60 and the sixth and final flow pump on my dream reef tank here. It is safe to say with four Vortec MP60s, even though they're only running at a maximum of 30% each, and the two Tunzi Stream 3 set to a maximum of 40% each, that uh, there is more than enough flow in this tank for the time being. That being said, I have learned from experience that as corals start to grow in there, they literally just choke the flow and then you have to start working out how you can get pumps in there and provide enough flow down the track. I didn't wanna fall into that mistake with this tank, so I've gone above and beyond with the number of flow pumps and with the flow ability with all of these turned down so far. Give it a year or two when I've got a bit of coal growth in there, I can easily bump the flow of any of these pumps up 5%, 10% and keep going until they, uh, they max out. But uh, seeing how much uh, water and sand it lifted up just by turning these up to 70% without even touching the tonsies um, tells me that I've got a long time to worry about that. But uh, I just wanted to do this video to show you how easy it is to um, set up the MP60s. I mean, the hardest thing really is lining these pumps up and uh, it was only really difficult for me because I wanted to mount them on my back wall, which meant I needed to get out my platform and lay over the tank, trying to line the uh, dry side or wet side. But thankfully, now that I've got those little tabs mounted on the tank and the uh, cable holder on the dry side, it's super easy to get that back where it was. And um, if it's ever not quite aligned, you just put it to constant mode and flat out the speed, move the wet side around until the, <laughs> the sound completely disappears and uh, you know you're set. I think that will hopefully answer most of your questions. I've seen a couple of videos um, where people are, are a bit unsure about uh, Mobius or I've seen posts on forums or Facebook. Uh, 
It's so super simple. Um, that's the fourth one I've set up. In fairness, it's only the fourth device I've ever done with Mobius. Um, each and every one of them was uh, seamless and pain-free. Um, the first one probably took a little bit more because I wasn't quite sure what I was doing, but um, you can see how easy it is. Like the app finds a device for you, add it, you then pick what mode you want, what maximum speed you want, and you're done. From there, I mean, you could, if you wanted to, you could set each of the pumps to do their own little thing. I like to have them all sort of set off as one as a parent, whether they're uh, matching the parent or doing the opposite of the parent. It just, it makes sense to me. It doesn't mean that's the way you guys have to do it. That's just the way I like to do it. And um, it seems to work well for me, but uh, that's probably all I've got to share today. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope it uh, helped you guys out there. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, anything at all around the uh, MP60 Vortex, around the Mobius, around the, I don't know, around the Tunzies, anything you've got at all, feel free to pop it in the comment section down below. I personally respond to each and every question or every comment, so if you wanna get in touch with me, that's the best way how. If you've enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. That really helps me out uh, by getting this video out to more reefers out there. And last but not least, if you're yet to subscribe, please consider doing so. Take two seconds of your time, cost you no money at all. Just click that little subscribe button down in the corner and that will ensure I can continue to make videos like this. For you guys to watch at home on the comfort of your lounge chair or in front of your computer or um, I don't know if you're sitting on the train on the way to work, <laughs> wherever it may be, I hope you're enjoying the videos. Till next time guys, I will leave it at that. Stay safe, keep reefing. Bye.